Mystery, danger, fifth column activity. Aha, secret weapons, deadly formulas. These are the forerunners of invasion. Say, what kind of an invasion is this? Why, it's just a bunch of kids in a doctor's office. What do you suppose they're up to? Uh oh. <laughs> well, now these floors are kind of slippery. It's a doctor's office, all right, but these kids aren't sick. No, sir, they're here to fight. To fight the oldest invasion of all, invasion by disease. You see, they've come to be vaccinated. Of course, this is Tubby's first vaccination. He won't admit he's afraid, but he is a little worried. Well, I guess it'll be okay. What do you suppose this vaccination business is, anyway? Say, that must be the needle. Boy, it sure looks awful sharp. Hey, I'm not gonna let him stick that thing into me. It's easy enough to see that Tubby doesn't quite appreciate what we're trying to do for him. I think we ought to take things a little slower right at the start here and let him in on the idea. Explain to him what vaccination really is. And while we're at it, why don't we get the rest of them in too so they'll understand what's going on when it's their turn. It's nice of you gentlemen to drop in like this. As a matter of fact, we were just going to call you anyway. You see, the doctor's going to tell us a little story. A story about vaccination. He's going to show us just what goes on inside our bodies when we get sick and how vaccination will help us get all set to fight off diseases even before they can sneak up on us. Now, in the first place, your body is a whole lot of separate parts all brought together into one wonderfully organized machine. It's like some big city with a lot of separate buildings or factories. For instance, the heart is the central office for the distribution of supplies to the other buildings of the city. And the blood is really made up of many little workers, which the heart sends to the different factories. Come along over here a minute. We'll show you some of these little workers in person. Of course, we can't show them to you while they're traveling around in your body doing their work, but you can see them sitting still on this glass slide. First, we'll spread them out thin so as to get a good look. There. Now you'll see for yourselves what we've been talking about. You see, what you've always thought was just a sort of red liquid that popped out of your finger when you cut it is really much more. It's actually millions of little workers with a job to do, the job of keeping us alive. <laughs> Looks like Rags here has a little bloodhound in him. Well, let's get back to our story of vaccination and see where we go from here. Let's see now. Here we are. We we're just going to tell you about our veins and arteries and how they're like the roads and highways of the body because it's through them that the little workers get around to the different organs or factories and do their jobs. Remember, we said your body is really like a city, a model city in which everything runs smoothly and will continue to do so as long as it's left undisturbed, undisturbed by the invader disease. this city has a gate through which supplies of raw materials must be taken. Suppose, for example, that you're loading up a new stock of groceries, bread and butter, lots of jam on it, ice cream and cake. This busy, peaceful city never heard of the invader. But look, the enemy. It's a deadly disease germ, all right. Oh, but there's only one. What harm can he do against the millions of little workers? Just watch him. Suddenly there are two. Then four. Then there are eight, and more to come. Now we understand why diseases are so deadly. It is because they have the power to transform themselves quickly into gigantic menacing hordes. He doesn't look so harmless now, does he? Before you know it, they multiply themselves into millions. Invasion. The alarm is sounded. The workers pour into the supply buildings to arm themselves, but there aren't enough weapons to go around. It's only with guns that the invaders can be conquered. 
There is nothing to stop them here because the body is not prepared. Frantically, the factories are converted to the manufacture of the all-important weapons, but they are far too slow. And as the ranks of the invader multiply with terrifying rapidity, we see that it is already too late. This city is blacked out forever, yet it could have been saved. You see, boys, this city, or rather this man, died because his body did not have arms and ammunition, or in other words, powers of resistance against disease. He was not prepared, and he was not prepared simply because he failed to take advantage of the greatest weapon against disease that medical science has to offer. Vaccination. Great men in all the countries of the world have struggled year after year, even given their lives in order that we might live. Jenner, Pasteur, Koch, and many others have worked to create this harmless little fellow who will protect us. He doesn't look like much, does he? But wait until you see what he can do for us. First, we have to get him into the body, and that's where vaccination plays its part. In vaccinating against the deadly smallpox, for example, an ordinary point like a darning needle presses sideways against the skin, letting in a few of the little helpers. But the lookouts inside the body do not know that these little fellows are harmless. They see their wall being attacked and strangers entering the city, and to them it's a real invasion and the army marches forth to battle. But in this case, there's nothing to fear from the weak make-believe invaders. Nevertheless, the factories of the body immediately go on an all-out wartime basis. Production zooms steadily upward. But this time, the armies of the body are winning, and the war plants have all the time they need to produce arms and ammunition. They work day and night, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, building the weapons to fight disease. Meanwhile, the soldiers are easily routing the harmless artificial invaders, and soon the battle is completely won. But look at the tremendous supply of arms and ammunition that the body has made for itself because of vaccination. We're ready for the invader. Let him come. Now, suppose you should catch some deadly disease right out of the air itself because eating isn't the only way the invaders can enter. They fly around on tiny dust particles or little drops of moisture. They're apt to be all around us, anywhere, anytime. But if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to worry because your body is prepared against the invader no matter which way he chooses to enter. Here they come, airborne troops launching their deadly attack. They're sure of themselves, confident of their power. But brother, they've got a real surprise in store for them this time. mechanized army moving into battle, equipped with the deadly weapons that they have built up through vaccination. The Black Horde continues its menacing advance. This is no false alarm. This is a real full-scale invasion. But the army of the body has been prepared. Look, our fighters are knifing through the invaders, slashing them to ribbons. Watch them use the firepower of mobile equipment to overcome the deadly disease germs. On every hand, we see brilliant examples of military strategy. The death rattle of the vaccine gun is heard on all sides. 
backed up by the dull roar of the germ bomber. On they come. And now the paratroops, most up-to-date of all fighting men. Watch them take over behind the lines, highly trained by vaccination in all the tricks of modern warfare against disease. They throw open a decisive wedge, into which rush the overwhelming and victorious army. Victorious because they have arms and ammunition. Arms and ammunition given them by vaccination. Well, it looks as if we have a customer already. Now we'll get a chance to see just what vaccination really is. The vaccine, or as we have shown it, the little helpers, comes in a glass tube. We clean the tube with alcohol, and then we clean the arm. Next, we break the tube to allow the vaccine to come out. Then, we put a drop on the arm and painlessly press it, not scratch it, into the skin. That lets the little fellows in, and that's all there is to it. Well, okay, what are we waiting for? Shucks, he knew there wasn't anything to it all the time. Let's go, boys, start building those jeeps. I should have had this done long ago. Shoot it to me, Doc. I've had an invasion of fleas for years. Well, here they come. Wasn't half as bad as having your ears washed, was it? And yet those few minutes in the doctor's chair have made it impossible for the invader to attack. For these boys are now prepared. Inside each one, a powerful defense army has been mobilized, ready and waiting. B for vaccination and victory. Victory over invasion. Oh, <laughs> my